Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. My name's Stuart Monroe, a long-term resident of the city, and each weekday around this time I'll bring news and views from Japan. And as the prospect of travel draws ever closer, I'll also note changes in travel as and when they happen. Mere days after Russian celebrations last weekend marking what it considers the end of the war in the Pacific, Russians now decided to withdraw from its visa-free travel program with Japan. Earlier Tuesday, the Russian government said it would scrap an agreement allowing Japanese former residents to visit the Russian-held, Japan-claimed islands off Hokkaido without visas. Japan, meanwhile, waives the same visa requirement for its Russian counterparts. And in Tokyo, prosecutors on Tuesday issued a fresh arrest warrant to Haruyuki Takahashi, the former Olympic Committee executive already embroiled in allegedly accepting bribes from major Japanese publisher Kadokawa, totaling 76 million yen or 540,000 US dollars. The former Kadokawa executive Toshiyuki Yoshihara was also arrested. He allegedly bribed Takahashi, along with the consulting exec Kazumasa Fukami, who allegedly received bribes from the publisher. On Tuesday, Takahashi, along with Hironoki Aoki, former chairman of the clothing retailer Aoki, was one of several people marked in connection with a separate bribery allegation, totaling around 51 million yen. Prosecutors believe Takahashi, a former senior managing director of Dentsu, held considerable sway over the organising committee's marketing division, responsible for selecting sponsors for the Summer Games. Following on from last week's issue of Notebook, looking briefly at the writer Runosuke Kutagawa, we briefly look at the second writer, Sanjugo Naoki, as the man behind the Naoki Prize. Sanjugo Naoki, whose real name is Shoichi Uemura, was born February 12th, 1891, at the very heart of Osaka. Naoki attended Waseda University to study English literature, but broke and without any money, was forced to drop out. And in 1920, he collaborated with writers Ton Satomi, playwright Masao Kume, and the poet Isamu Yoshi on the literary journal Ningen or Human. Shortly after the great Kranto earthquake of 1923, though, he returned to Osaka, at first attempting to work at a cosmetics company, but he soon was drawn back to the literary world. Naoki began working in Osaka as an editor of the literary magazine Kuraku, known as Joys and Sorrows contributing his own works of fiction, and soon began publishing his own novels. Although interested in the new trends towards cinema at the time, he experimented with script writing but failed to interest any studio, and by 1927 he'd moved back to Tokyo, where opportunities looked more promising, and obtained a post at the literary magazine Bungei Shunju, developing a reputation for his literary criticism, mixed with scandalous gossip which angered many of his contemporaries. Considered to be his masterpiece, the novel Nangoku Teheki was serialised in a newspaper in 1930, immediately bringing him fame and establishing him as a popular novelist. However, Naoki died prematurely at the age of 43, his death brought about by illness. But like fellow writer Kudigawa, his early demise also cemented a reputation that exists to this very day. A year after his death, the novelist and playwright Kan Kikuchi also a close friend of Akutagawa, established another prestigious award for Japanese literature and named it the Naoki Prize in his honour. Local residents in the area where he was born and raised also built the Sanjugo Naoki Memorial Hall on the corner of Toen Park in the Tanimachi part of central Osaka. After his death, Naoki was laid to rest at the Choshuji Temple in Yokohama, near the old Kaigan Road in the historic part of town and 30 minutes by foot from Nagishi Bay. That 
that's all for now. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and views. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts or think about spreading the word online. But for now, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook. Notebook.